We're going to start this unit with an introduction to the different arithmetic operations that you can do on polynomials. When adding and subtracting polynomials, the rule to follow is the rule of combining like terms. So we need to see uh, which terms between the two polynomials are like terms, and then we'll add the coefficients together accordingly. In this first example, we have two polynomials that we would like to add together. So what we need to do is identify if they have any like terms and then combine those accordingly. Looking at the first term in each, we see 8x to the fourth here and 3x to the fourth here. Uh, those are like terms because their variables and powers match up. So we can add them together by adding their coefficients, 8 and 3. So if we do 8x to the fourth plus 3x to the fourth, we get 11x to the fourth. Moving on to the next term, we have negative 3x to the third here and a positive 3x to the third here. Those are like terms, and so we add those together. Well, negative 3 plus positive 3 is 0, and so technically we can say plus 0x to the third. Looking at the next term, we see we have a 7x in the first polynomial, but in the second polynomial we don't have any terms that are like terms with it. So we're just going to leave it, plus 7x. And then if we look in the second polynomial, we see a similar situation with the x squared. We have an x squared in the second polynomial, and we don't have anything with an x squared in the first polynomial. So we'll need to leave that one as well. And then lastly, we have the constants on the end. Here we have a minus 2 in the first polynomial, and we have a plus 6 in the second polynomial. Those are going to combine to become positive 4. So now we have our result, but we can clean it up a little bit. Notice here we have a 0x to the third. Well, 0 times x to the third is just 0, and so we don't really need to write this term. Uh, and then apart from that, we can also write the terms in the standard polynomial order with the highest power first and then descending powers from there. So this would be equal to 11x to the fourth. Uh, we don't need the x to the third term. After that, we would have plus x squared and then plus 7x plus 4. Let's follow the same process for the second example. For our first term, we have 9k to the third, and in our second polynomial, we have a k to the third that is a like term with it. So we can combine those. 9k to the third minus k to the third is going to give us 8k to the third. Moving on, we have 17k squared in the first polynomial and a minus 3k squared in the second polynomial. So we can do 17 minus negative 3 is going to be 17 plus 3, which will turn into plus 20k squared. For the 8k term here, we have a 6k term that is like terms with it in the second polynomial. And so we can do 8k minus 6k gives us plus 2k. And then lastly, we have the constants. Positive 5 minus negative 4 combines to be positive 9. Another fundamental rule of polynomials is the law of distribution, which governs the way that multiplication and addition and subtraction interact. When we distribute, we take a multiplication operation and apply it to every single term in a summation. So in this first example, we're going to take our 5, which is our multiplication operation, and we're going to apply it to every term inside this summation. So the 5 is going to get multiplied by the 2x squared, the 5 is going to get multiplied by the 7x, and the 5 is going to be multiplied by the 8. So let's write out what I just said. We're going to take the 5 and we're going to multiply it times the 2x squared, and then we're going to multiply it times the 7x, and then we're going to multiply it by the 8. So we've written out what we intend to do, now we just do it. 5 times 2x squared gives us 10x squared. 5 times 7 is 35, so this is minus 35x. 
and then 5 times 8 is 40, so that gives us plus 40. We're going to do the same thing in the second example. We will take the 3k squared, which is a multiplication term, and we're going to multiply it times the 2k squared, and we're going to multiply it times the 5k, and we're going to multiply it times the 3. So again, let's write out what we intend to do. We're going to do 3k squared times 2k squared, and then we're going to do 3k squared times 5k, and then we're going to do 3k squared times 3. So what do we get? 3k squared times 2k squared is 6k to the fourth. And then 3k squared times 5k is 15k to the third. And then 3k squared times 3 is plus 9k squared. When we multiply polynomials together, we are really just using the distributive property multiple times. What we're going to do in this first example is take our 2x plus 3, and we will distribute it inside the first set of parentheses. And then when we finish that, we'll do a second distribution to get rid of the parentheses around the 2x plus 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the 2x plus 3 here by the 4x, and then I'm going to multiply it by the 7. So what we get is 2x plus 3 being multiplied by the 4x, and then 2x plus 3 being multiplied by the 7. If you look at the terms that we end up with here, we are now looking at two situations where we have a multiplication here outside a set of parentheses. Multiplication here, outside set of parentheses. In each of these cases, we can apply the distributive property again and then simplify our result. So we'll take our 4x and we're going to distribute that inside the first set of parentheses. And then we'll do the same thing with the 7, distribute it inside of its set of parentheses. So in the first set, we have 2x times 4x plus 3 times 4x minus, when we distribute in the second set, we have 2x times 7 plus 3 times 7. Now we can simplify each term. 2x times 4x gives us 8x squared, and then 3 times 4x gives us 12x. 2x times 7 is 14x, and then 3 times 7 is 21. The last thing we can do is combine like terms. Uh, there's nothing to combine with the 8x squared, so it stays as 8x squared. Then we have 12x minus 14x, which gives us negative 2x. And then in the last case, we have 0, because there's no constant term here, minus 21, which gives us minus 21. Let's apply the same technique in the second example. So we're going to first take our k squared plus 5, and we're going to distribute it to the 4k and also to the 3. If we do that, what we end up with is k squared plus 5 times 4k plus k squared plus 5 times 3. And again, from here, we will now distribute the 4k inside the first set of parentheses, and we'll distribute the 3 inside the second set of parentheses. So we have k squared times 4k plus 5 times 4k plus k squared times 3 plus 5 times 3. Now, cleaning those 
terms up, what we get is k squared times 4k is 4k to the third. 5 times 4k is 20k. k squared times 3 is 3k squared. And 5 times 3 is 15. Normally, you should expect to see some like terms in here that you can combine. Uh, in this case, we don't have any, but one last thing we can do is reorder the terms into the usual polynomial order. 4k to the third plus 3k squared plus 20k plus 15.